everyone, this is Joseph Mendoz with another video from virtualsheetmusic.com. Uh, so today I'd like to talk about uh, two things uh, that are very much related to one another. Um, and this is a topic that uh, I've only recently become uh, very interested in. Um, it has to do with uh, what kind of strings that you use on your cello. Now, this might not seem like... Um, uh, something that's very important or something that is almost kind of largely up to taste. Uh, but I think that it has a lot to do with actually um, how we want to approach the cello and, and what we want the cello to sound like and, and, and these kinds of things. Uh, now the most common strings that you'll see today uh, that are strung on the cello actually have some type of metal core, usually steel core. Um, in fact, the most one of the more common on the lower strings uh, the, the C and the G string are um, uh, made of uh, a, a rope, what they call a rope core, which is where they take steel uh, filament and wind them together into a kind of a rope. Um, now this makes the steel actually a little bit more pliable. It makes it not as stiff as, say, a totally solid core. Um, uh, so it, it's able to... Uh, have a little bit better feel, um, but all, with also having that very bright, powerful sound. Now, the trend lately in string construction has been towards um, uh, a lot of power. Um, uh, this this idea of getting the instrument to sound louder and louder, not just for the cello, but for all the string instruments, has been a very important part of research in string technique. Now, one of the things that they've tried to do is they've tried to, um, now I might be getting my terms, my terms wrong, uh, but they've tried to make, uh, ha have the strings have uh, uh, this much less of this twisting ability. That now, um, uh, you know, of course, the older strings were made with a gut core, and in fact, uh, many cellists uh, like Casals uh, and Emmanuel Foreman, um, you know, played uh, most of their careers on uh, uh, w certainly wire wrapped. Uh, um, in the case of Foreman and Casals, wire wrapped D, G, and C strings, which had a gut core, but also a completely plain, uncovered gut A string, which is surprising to most people because we associate those those plain gut strings without any wire, you know, on on them, only with a baroque performance practice or using a baroque cello or something like that. But but no, these were actually very common. Uh, uh, in fact, one of my teachers told me that when he started playing the cello, this was back in the late 50s, when he started playing the cello, so his first cello actually had an A and a D string that were playing gut, and this was very common. Anyway, getting back to today and the string construction, um, uh, now, again, we're using these steel core strings, and they have a very different sound, but getting back to what I was saying about torsion, um, uh, the, the strings have had a lot of torsion, these gut strings had a lot of this twisting, where whenever you would play on them, the, the response would be pretty slow. And so you had to develop a certain technique, a certain approach to the string that was much, much more um, uh, sensitive. Uh, for example, you couldn't press. Just to give you an example here, I'm playing on um, gut core strings on, on my bottom two strings, and if you just press just the tiniest amount, you get no sound. To really get the sound to develop, really have to coax the sound out much more. Um, now, so this move towards the steel core strings and away from gut core strings has a lot to do with this, uh, with this response. Um, that, and because you can press an extraordinary amount on these steel core strings and they just don't give up on you. Uh, however, I do think that the quality of sound is something that greatly suffers, not only because of the fact that you're using a steel core string, but because of the fact of how you're approaching it. So uh, cellist, for example, like Pierre Fournier, he used a steel A string, but he used gut core on the D, G, and C for the vast majority of his, in fact, I think probably his entire career, he at least used that. In his early career, he was another one that used the plain gut. Now, Pierre Fournier ha had an extraordinarily beautiful sound. And uh, not to be too overly critical of, of cello playing today, but you hear more of this kind of steely, bright sound out of the cello today than, than you hear that kind of noble sound that Pierre Fournier or Leonard Rose, same thing, got core strings on the bottom and then a solid uh, uh, steel on top. Um, uh, you, you just don't hear that kind of sound too much anymore out of cellos. Um, and, and I've come to understand and I've come to believe that, that some of it has to do with the, the fact of these strings, that you just can't press 
too hard on these gut strings or they just collapse on you. And that makes you play in a way that is much more beautiful and much more natural. Now you can uh, imitate this a little bit with using say something like dominance, like uh, a, um, the nylon core strings. Uh, the sound isn't quite the same in my opinion, um, but it, they're, they're very imitative of gut in the way in how, in terms of how they play, they do buckle quite a bit. Um, some of the more modern ones they've made um, in the last 10 to 20 years don't buckle nearly as much, um, but certainly they, um, it has the same effect. So really, it, it, you know, strings depends a lot on playing style. It depends upon a lot on, on what you want out of the cello. For example, um, using gut core strings can be tricky with tuning. They go out of tune uh, not as easily as people think. Uh, mine stay pretty well in tune. And I usually have to tune them maybe at most twice a day. Um, but usually just once a day, once in the morning, and then I'm fine. Um, uh, but uh, the steel strings, I mean, you can, I, I've not tuned, you know, for like three days in a row um, if the weather's very stable. Uh, so they're, they're, they are very good um, in that way. And also they do, in some cases, with some cellos, afford the instrument more power. But I have yet to hear a steel core string that is as beautiful as a gut core string on, on any cello. So it depends on your value system. Do you value a more beautiful, a more silky sound? Um, and, and do you want to maybe uh, uh, not sacrifice that beauty and then maybe have to work a little harder to develop the technique that you need in order to project with those strings? Or do you want to use steel core strings, which are much easier um, uh, to play on? Uh, certainly they're much easier to learn on uh, in terms of the cello because the, the, the strings stay in tune much more easily. Um, so it really just depends on a variety of factors. But just, I'd want to make one more last technical point about these strings. I really do think that um, they can they can improve how you approach the cello uh, using these gut core strings. Um, uh, certainly, uh, um, you know, I've, I've used uh, gut and, and nylon core strings on and off uh, my entire career. Um, and the times that I've had the gut core on have been the times when I'm the happiest with my playing. Um, I'm not forcing, I'm not uh, over pressing. So please consider this the next time you uh, uh, think about, uh, you know, changing strings on your cello and, and be willing to experiment with some strange things. Uh, don't just uh, accept, you know, what the string companies tell you, which these days is that, you know, steel core is the way to go. It, you know, it gives you power, brilliance, all these things. You know, try a wide variety of things. You might be very surprised uh, with, uh, with, with the results. So please uh, leave your comments down below on the virtualsheetmusic.com website, not on YouTube. On YouTube, I cannot see them. Also, um, if you have not yet subscribed to my new web website, cellojunkie.com, please do. Um, there'll be a new blog coming up very soon. Um, and I'll also be releasing some exciting news, very exciting news about um, a, a large project that I've been working on now for uh, really since about uh, January of, of this year. Um, uh, you'll, I'll be announcing that very, very soon. Uh, I'm very excited about it, and uh, you'll see that on cellojunkie.com, but only if you subscribe. So please uh, go to that website and, and subscribe. Uh, so thank you again. This has been Joseph Bendos with virtualsheetmusic.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.